In this episode, I am heading to the Mark Twain National Forest in Southeast Missouri to meet up with Mike from Understanding Bigfoot. The Mark Twain National Forest has 1.5 million acres of public land that is spread across the southern portion of Missouri. Mike has invited me to look around on a piece of property that has been having frequent Bigfoot activity. Property owner has reported a Class A sighting, and he is also hearing large amounts of odd vocalizations coming from the forest. I was excited and nervous at the same time, and I didn't know what to expect or where the exact location would be. Follow me as I join up with Understanding Bigfoot and investigate Bill's property. You guys don't mind being on camera? If you don't mind ugly people being on camera. Yeah, that sounds good. Turn around, ugly. All right. <laughs> well, I'm with Mike from Understanding Bigfoot, and we're getting ready to, to head out to this cabin out at a forested area. We won't give the exact location, but yeah. We, we are bordering the Mark Twain National Forest in southeast Missouri to give people an idea. Uh, the Mark Twain National Forest is one of the squatchiest places in the country. Okay, so, good deal. So. Uh, Miguel, it's certainly good to be with you and uh, your program, and we've followed it for the last several months, and uh, we're, we're certainly looking, hopefully you have a successful day. Yeah, yeah, me so. too. So there's been a lot of Sasquatch activity? There's been place. some very recent activity at the place we're going. Uh, Bill Rummage is one of our fellow research partners, and we had very recent activity, like within the last week, uh, in the last several months at, at his place, including a visual, and, mm. and some uh, good solid evidence. So we're looking forward to, to uh, seeing that. Okay, good deal. That's so. what I like to hear is actual things happening at that time that I'm Hey, this is, this is not <laughs> off the press. Bill's been, Bill's been um, uh, gifting them this week and, and there's been some activity with the receiving the gifts and so forth. So hopefully hopefully they we don't run them off. Yeah, yeah. hopefully <laughs> um, it's active. I was actually out here last weekend, actually a week ago, mm -hmm. and uh, I spent the night in the cabin. Um, I did find some, some prints coming out of the woods at his property, I think it's around five acres. Uh, 15 and a half, 16 inch prints. Uh, I didn't measure them with tape measure, mm -hmm. but uh, that evening we had a campfire and we did some uh, wild man of the woods calls and we heard some callbacks, you know, probably a mile away, but I don't think they were alpha male or anything, but you know, they were about a mile away. Okay. And then the next, after that night, um, I spent the night in the cabin.
cabin, I was taking out my uh, hound dog and uh, she kept going behind the, uh, the cabin for some reason smelling and she actually found some 16 inch prints, which uh, I'll send you some pictures. Uh, and they, once I felt them, you could feel them, they were in the earth. I may have mm. sent those pics, I don't know. I've seen, I've seen one of them. The, the, uh, they were but, about 16 or so, yeah, I didn't actually but, uh, them. But yeah, that's, and, and I would be one to, to, to theorize, no pun intended, <laughs> mm-hmm. that the one responding to Steve's call a mile away is probably different than the one that lingers around the camp. You know, they, you probably have several of them in that in, in the region and so forth. But, yeah, without uh, a doubt. But but that's that's just my speculation on that. So. Mm-hmm. And I saw the cabin; it looked like it was completely surrounded have, by forest. Yeah, it's way yes, out there. Yes, it is. The uh, the print that she found, which I have her with me, she's in the truck, but we might be using her later today to track. I haven't trained her or anything. She's mm-hmm. uh, her name's Sweetie Lulu. She's a adorable 13 year old dash hound even though she's an inside lap dog she is a hound dog and okay. i can't take that away from her i haven't really trained her her old mate i have but her she just she's mm-hmm. a princess yeah. but but she does do good with her nose when she smells around yeah uh later that day last saturday we went to an area of the property where uh mr bill uh has never been and it's it's pretty treacherous and it goes down the valley into like a uh, a dry creek bed we found a, a tree with a 90 degree bend in it, which was probably five years growth of it since then. Um, within about a hundred yard circle, we found uh, a tree that was upside down, stuck in the ground a foot. It took me a lot to get it out, but once I mm-hmm. pulled it out, it was obviously upside down, pushed in the ground. Yeah. We also found in that area, what we call growing rocks, where you find a rock, this one in particular was the size of a softball mm-hmm. and if you pick the rock up I just had a curious notion to pick it up and there's fairly fresh leaves underneath it so that rock was put there and this property owner has has never been to this area okay. so that's kind of a theory we've been discussing lately in our research area in Cape Girardeau County where it seems like the edges of fields are growing rocks and uh, mm-hmm. there's always uh, deer prints within you know one or two or three feet from it so we, okay. may, we maybe discuss that later. Yeah, yeah, that sounds interesting, and yeah. I'm glad we got a dog out there. That's better than any piece of technology you can buy. Lulu is a squatch uh, magnet. She's a she she can sniff them out. She I mm-hmm. mean she's she's a regular with us when we research over uh, Mississippi River bottoms mm-hmm. over in our area, about another 60 or so miles from here to the east. But, mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah, so we're looking forward to the day and the weekend. So. Yeah, me too. All right. Well, if you guys are ready, let's get out. All right, let's go. All right, I'll follow you guys. Thanks. that squatch over there across from the cemetery four or five times heard her over here three or four times where'd you see him at heard her back there come on back here i'll show you right where i seen him yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go on i'm gonna get some shoes on and you gonna... don't mind if i film bill no no okay I'm i should have asked that before i pulled up the camera no my kid told me okay so when my dog comes out at night i like to get a flashlight and i'll run it around the edge of the wood line you know mm-hmm. i'm standing Right there, I'm going around here. Come right there, and there was a Bigfoot laying there. And it started, you know, I went, 
took a couple steps back as mm -hmm. it shocked me although i knew i knew there was one here because i have heard her i say of her because that's what, what i think of her would act like but i've heard her yell out here seven or eight times so she was laying right over here and like on its back or on its side no she it looked like she was laying on her side mm -hmm. looking at just watching the house okay just like a you know like maybe like we watch tv mm -hmm. watching the house. okay and she comes up this gully back down there so she can travel this whole area yeah right down in there is that like a huge creek bottom down in there yeah it is a little creek bottom and what she does is she'll come right up in here in that leafy bedded area mm -hmm. and she'll just lay there and just watch the house okay at night you know how, how long she stays uh, this was about 3 3 a.m when i came out here and seen her mm -hmm. uh, that morning she was just what the sasquatch look like well she had to be cold black i could see her eyes her eyes were huge mm -hmm. and the funny thing about this one was uh they weren't red you could almost they were almost transparent but just huge big eyes and she just slowly just looked at the flashlight and she just slowly just turned her head like she wasn't in any hurry mm -hmm. and just went right off right off into the woods and just disappeared into the night right so she had to be dark brown or black because mm -hmm. you, you you couldn't you know there's there no white how it, big do you think she was i would if i had to guess man i would say she's about seven seven and a half foot okay half foot tall so a pretty good size did you uh yeah. I'm guessing you didn't find any tracks just because there's so many leaves and everything. No, I went down in there and did not find any tracks, but Steve wasn't here. If Steve would have been here, he, he would have he would have found some tracks in there. We found tracks behind the cabin that we'll show you in a little bit. Okay. Uh, I think they, so they were about 15 inches. You think she's living down in that area? No, I don't. I think, and I don't know, mm -hmm. I think she's living right up here. See that? That's Rock Pile Mountain. Mm -hmm. Right up over there. And, and you'll get a, you can get a bear cub up there. Okay. I think she's living in the cave system over there because it's known to have caves okay. over there. And I've heard her yell out here uh, more often in, in the daytime hours, in the afternoon hours, more than I have at nighttime. Mm -hmm. But sometimes she'll just do a yell, and sometimes she'll make a noise like a dog being ripped apart. Just, I mean, it just sounds god awful terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can walk over there where the noise came from, and you won't find anything. There's no dog over there. And I know that's a squash because I've heard the same noise made by a Sasquatch out where we go to mm -hmm. out there north of Cape. Okay. Uh, I don't want to say the area, but you, they probably mentioned it to you mm -hmm. uh, already. And, so uh, what's your goal, your overall goal with the activity? Are you just trying to get some evidence or just trying um, to figure out more what's going on around the property? Well, my goal uh, is to get some evidence, uh, but I've given up trying to um, convince people mm -hmm. that they're real, that, you know, Either you believe they're real or you don't, and some people you'd have to bring in dead body, and that's not what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to actually just you know kind of befriend them and just have a relationship where we can live together. Right. You know, just uh, uh, you know, because they were here before we were, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, yeah, we own this land uh, on paper, but they to me they really own it. Yeah, they've they been were, around a lot longer. They've been around a lot longer. You kind of want to take away that that separation of fear that. They have. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, that's what it is. And uh, you know, we, we put some apples up on the trees over here, and we've had apples taken. Uh, about sometimes they'll take apples, you know, maybe two nights in a row, and then be every other night. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it, it might be a couple of nights where they don't take any apples. Right. Uh, and lollipops. Mm -hmm. They like lollipops. They'll now, when they take the apples, <clears throat> let's say you put out four apples, do they leave you one or do they, do they take them all? No, they don't. They don't take them all. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll take one uh, or two. And I've heard, I don't know this, but I haven't seen it, but I've heard that they're all about sharing mm -hmm. uh, with their clan. Yeah, see, that's with, what with I noticed with um, the gifting activity at my place is if I put four apples out, they'll leave two. If I leave two fish, they'll leave one. Yeah. And with like raccoons or other little critters they'll tear everything apart and not yeah. really leave much yeah yeah and uh that's with the lollipops as well mm -hmm. uh, they'll take one or two lollipops i have five up there i don't have any up there right now uh i didn't replace them so i wanted to see if they would take all of them all the lollipops are gone mm -hmm. uh, there are still three apples i reloaded the apples uh three nights ago and one's been taken 
Okay. And there's still three apples up there, and I haven't put I haven't put the five lollipops back out yet, but we're going to do that. Okay. Well, let me get Later. some gear ready, okay. and um, yeah, we'll get at it and okay, take yeah. a look around. It's going to be fun. All right. It's yeah. Be fun. I appreciate you letting me come out here. And oh, you're welcome. Hang out. Get the heavy camper. Yes. Mm -hmm. They may have hunting hunting parties out here for the deers and stuff. Lots of deer. So this is our little. A little hunting cabin right here. Oh yeah, nice place. Not bad. It's got a kitchenette, it's got a shower, bathroom, got your bed here, TV. Yeah. Futon. Nice and warm. <laughs> a little crowd with this big bed. I think we should get a smaller bed. Yeah, I've got this big chair in here and use it. Well, we can take this table out. You guys here ever hear any? And this is after I've heard the, the squats several times. So did you guys ever hear any weird noises or yells you can't explain? No? Never hear anything. I said, well, did you hear the dog last night back off over here? It's not like he was getting tore apart and stuff. No? You didn't, didn't hear nothing. I don't get it. It seems to happen more often. I mean, I'm hearing it. Even in our research area, we talked to some neighbors and they're like, no, we don't hear nothing. Mm -hmm. I've been, I lived here all my life. It's like, really? I think just a lot of people don't think about it. Right. They, they're hearing it, but it's not going. They're hearing it, and they just are oblivious to it. Mm -hmm. And when we talk to these people, the, the, the first time they'll say, nah, we don't hear anything like that. But, and Steve can attest that they almost always come back the next time you see them and say, you know what? You might be on to something because these are the things I'm experiencing. And now that I realize that I can't explain it. Right. And we've heard two or three different people up in our research area over by the Mississippi River come back to us and say that. And Bill over here where he's at, uh, well, we'll have the next time he talks to these people, he'll get the same thing probably. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. One time we were at our research area and we had a little campfire. I think all of us were there, or most of us were there. and. Uh, it's a public area, but I'm not going to mention you know, my location or give that away mm. but in Cape County. But a hunter was coming out of the woods, and um, it, was, yeah. it was a little bit after dusk. We had a nice little fire going, and it was probably an older gentleman walking, and uh, he was coming out of the area. And we heard in the, the background, a Bigfoot, we knew it was Bigfoot, but it actually said Yahoo. It was like, Yahoo, but didn't say it very loud, but we all heard it and looked at him, and he was... A, he didn't even pay attention. He didn't even look mm -hmm. around. We're all like, "Really? You didn't? You didn't hear that?" He acted like it didn't register. Or nothing. Right. So we 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 tend to have that happen a lot. If you're not in, like Matt said, in tune with it, that mm -hmm. you know, you just don't think what it is. I mean, yeah. You almost have to believe in them to see more evidence. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I agree. So you have to believe in them to to see more evidence, and then once you believe in them or know they exist, then the evidence starts popping out you just gotta, gotta yeah. look i mean we found evidence all the time next to roads and creeks and bridges and most people wouldn't think nothing of it but we know what it is and mm. um, evidence is there a lot of people just overlook it because they don't know what they're looking for or for, for, for whatever reason yeah no doubt you got to get in, in tune with the activity and you have to get off the couch is what I like to tell a lot of my <laughs> friends and family well, you want to go down to the lollipop tree go to the gifting yeah. tree yeah. let's do it tree you got Simmons Cemetery right across the road here. I've heard her up there and I found prints up there. You know, Bill, maybe we need to go look up there today, too. Yeah, we can walk up there. Here. Put right here. Yeah, I saw that coming in. It was a good introduction. Yeah, yeah, I love it. <laughs> the neighbors up the road from me actually put one up after yeah. I had my sightings. I don't know who they are, but I kind of wonder, you know, maybe they've seen something as well. Yeah. Or, I mean person's got to become a fan by having an experience in my opinion or just being really into the subject yep. well, right here we own this property here mm -hmm. but see they can come right across that road right there then go right here and they can skirt this entire property then go that way and you'll never you'll never see them 
Yeah, there's plenty enough room for them to hide. It's real oh, thick yeah. in here. Oh, look, we do. We have had something up here eating on it. Yeah. Now that's not a squash right there. I wonder if that was a squirrel that was known. No matter. Maybe a raccoon. Yeah, that's a raccoon or a squirrel something eating that one there. So we'll take that with us when we leave. Okay. And here's some lollipop. There's one lollipop there still on the stick. Mm -hmm. This one here. That's a raccoon trying to get at that one, it looks like, or something. Yeah. We'll take that with us. This one's still faring pretty good, so we're just going to leave it up there. Mm -hmm. I like and your then, gifting site. It is. It's pretty good. I'm, I'm thinking how far down did you go? You know, it's, you it's not too far to walk down, it and it's, it's good enough to where they can it still is, feel mm -hmm. hidden. How long have you had this gifting site going? Only a week. Only a week? Okay. Yeah. How long do you plan on having it going? Yeah. As long as the apples keep disappearing. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. If it goes too long where the apples aren't disappearing, I'll, I'll just quit doing it. But Yeah. I notice on that ridge across that holler, it's a big pine thicket. Yeah. yeah. They like to hang out in those pines. Yeah. Have you ever, well, you said that's not your property over there? No, that's not my property over okay. there. I wonder if there's some structures up in there. Way back up in there there is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a public land there. Is it Mark Twain? Right there, Mark Twain. I can look on my phone. It'll tell me. Yeah. Oh, look at this. I found one. And see, that's the first lollipop I found down there with the with the candy still on it. Mm -hmm. Usually, they look like this. But that could be anything, mm -hmm. you know, taking that. Yeah, with mine, they take off the wrappers and, like, chew up the sticks and leave the... You, so you leave those. the wrappers on yours? Yeah. Maybe that way it, I can see, you know, if something's tearing it up or if it just <clears throat> unfolds it and takes it off. And that's what was happening with mine. You know, I'd still find the full piece of paper. So uh, and like stick. a raccoon would probably chew on it and then mm -hmm. leave little pieces then. Okay. Yeah. I'm not we'll seeing do. no uh, prints, Bill, but with a good gust of wind, it would cover anything up since the leaves were about <clears> six inches deep. But that don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'd have to be right on it to mm -hmm. find the prints. Okay, so you're saying the, the tracks that you guys found are, are down in this holler? Or? Um, actually, last weekend, the I think okay. we found, uh, Bill, were they right here? The first set we found last Saturday, coming up out of the woods. I think they were up here. Yeah, they were up there. And yeah, we went up behind the cabin. And we'll go up there. Let's, let's go up here and we'll look for the ones coming out of the woods. And then we'll go behind the cabin and we'll let Lulu kind of sniff around a little bit and do her job. No, I'm okay. not. All right, I'll get yeah. this for you. All right, I appreciate that. Right. And the prints we found last weekend were roughly 15 and a half to 16 inches. I didn't actually measure them, but I can judge pretty good. I think they were right here. Bill, were they right here? Yeah, they were. I think they were. They were like coming up out of the woods somewhere in here. I don't know if this was the exact spot on that one set, but over. And it was a pretty big track. 15 and a half to 16, just guessing without measuring. But we'll head back to the cab, and I definitely know where those prints are. Uh, even if we can't visually see it, you can. I remember where they're at, and you can put your hand in them and feel that they're about three inches deep in the earth, and you can actually feel the toes. Yeah, that's about the depth of the tracks that I found. They're about two or three inches. I've actually. But like, if you stomp the ground next to it, you don't even make a dent. Right. Actually, in my uh, research area in Cape Trotter County, uh, I should have brought some of my casts, but I casted a big boy mm -hmm. that was 24 inches long, 11 inches uh, wide at the toes, and I actually stumbled into the hole, which was, it was a wet, swampy area, kind of, sort of, but they were eight inches, eight or nine inches deep in the earth. Mm -hmm. But how much would something like that weigh, how tall it was? You can only speculate, but I'd say 10 feet plus and probably at least 1,000 pounds at least. Mm -hmm. I always notice I find one track as well. Did you guys find more than uh, one? We, we, every time I find tracks, if you kind of, what I tell some people, if you find one, you're not sure it is, feel it, but kind of back off a little bit, like from where I'm standing, if the mm -hmm. track is there and Mike, look at a 45 degree angle and you can actually see the progression. Mm -hmm. 
and a lot of them we find are 17 to 21 is very common what yeah, we find in our area yeah. and the, the bigger ones you know 22 24 yeah but they will have a, uh, a foot stride of five to six feet somewhere in that range yeah. and uh, yeah that, they're starting to get pretty big for the and, most part. Usually, if you can't see a clear print, you can see where it's stepped. You look up to five or back to five, six feet, you can see where it's stepped, and then you go another five or six feet. Mm -hmm. Then you might see another clear print. They might The two clear prints might be four or five steps apart, but you can see where the steps were taken um, to get to that point. And you can so. see the progression, and sometimes when they're walking, when they pass uh, different earth mediums, it might not leave a print, so just keep going every five foot, look and look, and then, it, then you can see the progression of it walking. Mm -hmm. I found out that's a pretty good sign when, when you can uh, step back a little bit and look, and you can see the progression. Yeah. Even if they're 20 feet away, you can see it like through the yard, like every five or six foot or whatever it is. You know, some of the smaller ones we found, what, 10 inches? We've seen anywhere from 10 to 24, just yeah. about every inch increment in between. Usually the pattern is a 12 to 14 inch track will have an average of about a four foot stride length, mm -hmm. uh, 15 to, to 17, 18, about a five foot stride length, and then the big ones, the 19 to 24 inches, they have about a six foot stride length. Okay. If you want, average. we can head over to the cabin and see if we can find any fresh prints and uh, we can show you the, uh, the prints we found last Saturday. Yeah, sounds last, great to me. Last Sunday. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah. Oh yeah, wait till you see that tree down there too. That tree that's bent. I mean, that's cool mm -hmm. as heck, man. Did you take a picture of that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's the uh, horn stuff on that one too? Property boundary. That's a uh, Mark Property Boundary National Forest. Okay. And also what I tell people too is let's say a Bigfoot uh, go passing through the area or mm -hmm. visiting the area. A lot of times they won't walk up here. They'll walk right at the edge. It gives it a, I think, a different uh, advantage of hiding the tracks better. It'll walk edges of roads, uh, creeks, and stuff like that. It'll walk like in between the forest or a field, just right at that threshold. I noticed that a lot lately. It's kind of commonplace that. Yeah, I noticed that too. They'll stay about 40 yards into the wood line. Or well, even times, they'll walk right at the edge. Mm -hmm. Right at the edge. Let's say this is a, a yard or a field. I mean, it'll be right at that threshold of that woods in this yard. It happens yeah. quite often. Yeah, we can head over there and see what we can find these prints. Okay. Lulu, find them. Find Bigfoot. Come on, we'll find Bigfoot. Come on. He's a wealth of information. We found last week. You look here. You see two prints. One, here's the toes. Mm -hmm. You see the big toe. That, that would be the right foot. And that's, you know, that's, Mike, you got your stick. That's about 17, yeah. I think. Yeah, now looking at it. Where is it? Right there. So let me, right there. Uh, I got a couple of marks on this stick. That's about 17, I think. Yeah, I can definitely see where the grass is. Actually, if you, down. if you fill down here, and especially this one, this is uh, the, actually, that's the right foot, and here's the left foot. This one here, you can really feel. You can feel the toes here too. It's not castable, but mm. yeah. I'm showing the 22 on that. Actually, it's 20. 20. 20 and a half. But this one, you actually put your hand in there mm -hmm. and you can feel it right here. Here's the end of that it. Was smaller. Nah, it's the same one. It should be about 20, 20 and a half. Right there, it's with that. Okay quarter inch. Mm -hmm. Here's the heel, here's the foot. But put your hand in there, you can feel the bolster of it, of the weight of the animal. That's, you know, wow. that's probably getting... I do feel, like right there, it's like the big toe. Yeah, that's yeah, I do feel like indentions uh -huh. where the toe should be. And here's the heel, which I was telling Mike, yeah, it's uh, lifted up there. a lot of Bigfoot in our area, their heels are not proportionally big for the size of the prank, even mm -hmm. compared to humans. It's like, the heel's kind of small and it kind of triangulates outward. We see that quite often. A 20 incher, you know, I would say that's probably eight footer and it probably weighs at least minimum of, if it's eight foot, the ones I've seen, the well, males, they weigh, I, I've seen some that weighed 
750 uh, pounds at seven and a half feet tall, cat. about four and a half feet wide too. According to most scales, about two feet every inch, so a 20 incher would probably be roughly around ballpark of 10 feet according to most scales. So that's a big boy. But now you got a left foot and you got a right foot standing right here. Uh -huh. So you might look and see if, if you didn't walk away or I don't know if you have any other impressions or anything like that to kind of confirm that. Well, last weekend after Lulu found oh. these, uh, she ran over to the shed there looking back at me, uh, acting like she wanted me to come over there and check it out. But there's gravel over there and we really didn't see no impressions for the most part. But. But yeah, this was two footprints, one here and one there when he was standing here. Mm -hmm. And it looks like here's another one right here. Can you see it? You yeah, can I can it. see like another... Put your injection. hand right up here. You can feel the toes. I mean, it progressed. Just now I, I, see see yeah, I see the toes. I see the toes. I can. You guys hear Lulu? She's yeah. whining. What'd you find, Lulu? She's trying to get a new probably smells it over there. No, what, what'd you find? What'd you find? Tell me what you found. So these here, this next step, right here. Ah, here. something that went in there. Yeah. He saw a stride was walking big. No, he just standing foot. right here flat footed. I'm six foot five. And he's taking that next step right here. I would have to take a small leap from a flat footed position to get to that step. And he's just the next step without even trying to take a stride or his normal pace and walking. Just taking that next step. Here's right. one right here, too. Then you go up there. So you're probably right here. Yeah. It's in the ground at least an inch and a half there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that one there. Last weekend, Lulu alerted me over there by that shed, so it looks like the prints are here. So somewhere in here, you would have the left foot, the step in between, and then that right foot going that way again as it gets going, somewhere mm -hmm. in between here. So, so the, the, to reiterate what Steve says, the, to find the progression, people say, well, biggest thing is, how come only one print? How come there's only one print? There are more than one print. You just have to... With the way the terrain is, the way the ground is, you have to look at progressions further down the road. You can see where those other steps have been taken, and then somewhere maybe it just didn't pick up that you had that print in between. But, but if people look close enough, they almost always will find where more than one step was taken. In the progression of tracks, they can see the stride length, the consistent footprint length to, to indicate and confirm that, yeah, something with that size foot and that size stride length was walking a pattern mm -hmm. the progression and see so, myself i'm pretty lazy with tracks like i want it to be pretty defined and you guys are really looking hard to actually you know you, well, you have to look pretty hard to notice this and i'm going to tell you something miguel good. i am two years new at this game mm -hmm. steve um is is experienced these sasquatches since he was a teenager and 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 really um, probably as, even as far as documentaries, watching people on YouTube, watching these so-called experts on these TV shows, Steve knows more about tracking than anybody else I've ever dealt with. And it's yeah, taught, it's me, taught, me, it taught me a lot about tracking. I would have never noticed that. This and, is what I was saying. And, um, but, and we'll share the story sometime, how I got to know him mm -hmm. and, and got him back in this research game after him spending several years um, out of it, okay. So yeah, the uh, we can we can get that story because it's really it's really an interesting story. Yeah, no doubt. So. Uh, well, I was ran off the first night. Remember that? I was going to sleep the night through and didn't didn't and it got so scared I left. And then uh, I've been growled at out there. Heard a chihuahua barking in the woods where you know there wasn't no damn chihuahua out there. Not there. Uh -uh. I've heard them laughing where they were sound, sound like they were telling jokes just laughing up and down when uh, that was one where uh, my buddy was snoring so loud I couldn't get him to wake up one was behind his tent huffing and puffing at him one was by my tent growling at me and I ought to say now while that was going on right down the road there was three or four sound like they were 
telling jokes and just <laughs> just laughing up the storm. While the, while these two are up here doing the doing the work. I've actually heard them talking in the woods. Uh, kids laughing. I even heard two males talking, which I'm down in a creek where I'm looking out in the field and three quarters of a mile any which way, there's nothing, nothing visible, but I can hear them talking and it looked like they were talking, uh, like telling jokes. You can hear one going, rah, 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 rah. Yeah, yeah. Rah, 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 and the other one go. <laughs> it is, it's funny, isn't it? And then I, I stepped on a stick trying you to should get hear a, them. a little closer and then they went quiet, but I, yeah. There's Usually here was just, it's funny, like they it's were telling crap, jokes, man. Probably human jokes, more than likely. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I've heard them talk occasionally in the woods. Uh, it sounds like mumbling. Yeah, you can almost make it out, but it, you can't. Uh, Gibberish. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's really, we've heard it too, where it's really fast, like. Uh, but they know really exactly fast, what they're like, saying. Really fast. I mean, like they know a, exactly. The Mexican mm -hmm. language, it's just. Yeah. But, but, but you know, um, Bill, the first time he spent the night by himself was June 2020. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and he got, you know, he, he got spooked as they came into his camp. He was by himself. <laughs> He didn't know what to expect. He got spooked. He got, he got, he, you know, he left, he left his son up the next morning after probably shivering in his tent for three straight I sat hours. I with my 45 to my chest till the sun <laughs> yeah. came up. Mm -hmm. But you have gone from that experience telling me on the phone, I'm never going to do that again. I'll never, ever, ever, we'll do that again. I'm done. To you and I, after a certain period of time, I thought, you know what? Bill's done this four or five times by himself and, and he's, and he hasn't. He's still alive. I'm going to start staying with him yeah. and see what this is like. But you've gone from that experience to whistling back and forth with one yeah. one yeah. night. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just uh, back in back in uh, May, back in May. Yeah. Whistling back and forth with one, and to having hearing me have local interza interactions with yeah. one. Uh, just recent, you know, recently is um, is 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 November, just last month. So. Yeah. Um, you made a long progression in in trying to figure this stuff out. That was October thirty first. No, it wasn't. Wasn't it Halloween night? We, we got rained out that weekend. Oh, it was, it was it was November. That's right, we did. It was the first it first out. weekend of rifle deer season. That's right. That's right. Middle of November. So. Yeah. Well, that's cool, man. You can bring it out here. We can go. We can go up the road. The woods and everything. So, wake up. so you think they have a fast fascination with observing humans? I'd walk they do. I think they watch people effect, I more guess. often than people realize. Uh, I, going, oh God, I, I tell people there's more squatch than people realize. So, I've had, one time I had the probably a couple dozen sightings, room. and I've never seen a black bear ever. Said, I've never seen one either. Now, last year I did find a bear print in my research area, probably about eight inches across. Here's the deal, though. They'll say. That's that the funny. Native Americans also did those things too for, for directional markers yeah, and stuff trail. like that. But the thing is, you got to figure how old is this tree and when was that done? Because the Man, Native Americans right have not inhabited this area for over 100 years, probably. So, yeah. So you're, you know, you guys said, how old was that? And that tree's not that old. 170 you know? years, roughly. Yeah, yeah, that tree's not that old. So, anyway. Now, Steve said he read somewhere that this is virgin forest. I'm like, if that's true, though, these trees would be a lot bigger. Don't these trees get bigger? Well, not your property well, around here on the... Uh, this isn't virgin forest. Not this. No. If you want to see virgin forest, you need to go to Big Oak Tree State Park down at uh, East Prairie. East Prairie. East Prairie. Yeah. It's never been cut off. There's cedar trees down there and tuplos and cypress. But there's a lot of squashes down around. there. Yeah. That's how they Merrimack Springs is where we're yeah. from. Just yeah. giant trees and yeah. They are, pretty high they, they are down there in those Mississippi bottoms down there, Mississippi County. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. what the Sasquatch like are the forests that Heck haven't yeah. been cut down. Yeah. They can just step right back there. And their shoulders three or four foot wide. They'll never. Yeah, they, they can they, hide right back there. They found one down there. Really? They big Oak Tree State Park. They found more than one. Yeah. They are there a lot of stories from that area? They got videos of one down there. Oh, okay. There's yeah, a like YouTube, YouTube video of, of that. Yeah. And I think they had a documentary on yeah, TV a couple years ago. Yeah. I forget what channel or what program, but they talked about it because it yeah, caught my attention. Like Big that. Oak Tree State yeah. Park is yeah, I like this East one. Prairie. Yeah. Two weeks old. So oh, I'm, is it? I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> now, during college years and stuff, uh, I wasn't really into Bigfoot, but I'll I'll start seeing them uh, 
mountain biking, going down hills, you know, 30, 35 miles an hour, you know, catch them off guard in the middle of a field, the edge of a field or the edge of forest, we would just catch them off guard. And not just me, but me and my brother and one of my good buddies, uh, Jimbo, mm -hmm. we'd catch them off guard. And they don't, you don't, they don't let you see them long, kind of like deer sometimes when you're hunting, but most of my sightings were catching them off guard like that, mountain biking, you know, flying down hills. So for the most part, I've had a couple other sightings, but they, they all been in this area. And I think I had one when I was real young, uh, North St. Jen County somewhere, probably back in the late seventies, early eighties, that was probably my first sighting. But if you would, uh, we'd we'll go on this little hike. We shouldn't be gone too uh, too long, but we can show you the evidence I found last weekend. It's not, it's probably about 90 yards down, but it, you might want to watch your step. It's pretty, okay. pretty steep and there's rocks underneath the leaves. So. Some neat chairs. Research chairs. Yeah, <laughs> I spent a lot of money on this one. It's Official Bigfoot research chairs right off on right taxes, here. Uh, big, research big equipment. Bill. Look at Very that. first time he had it out there at the camp. The area where there's a pile of them. It's like it's an ammo depot. Like they've collected them. It's about this tall, about eight feet wide. Uh, we've seen it. He really? It. But it's like an ammo pile. There, there's no other ones like that, but they're all placed right there. And there's leaves underneath them. Like when they're coming down, they might throw them on a pile for extra ammo. Wow. That's something we never thought about. Well, last week when we found one rock, but going down today, knowing to look for them, they're everywhere, down there on that Yeah, pile. but an ammo pile, we never thought about That's never crossed our minds. Well, well but if, right? they, we never if they're about using that. the rocks in hunting, they, 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 you know, it, it makes sense that they would have, especially if there's a game path near there or something like that, they'd have a stash like that. And they're in that pile, you know, it's about this tall, eight feet wide. Really? That's a lot of rocks. But some of them were placed there last year because there's dirt underneath them, and others have fresh leaves underneath them. Like, it's a consistent pile, ammo pile, that they keep restocking. They're, ad they're adding to that. Some there from years past, and other ones that are fresh. And we picked them up everywhere, and they were fresh leaves right underneath them. Everywhere. Especially on that pile. And I don't think any... People are going down there and throwing rocks on a pile of rocks. Well, no. no. This is your property. And last weekend was the first time you ever been there. It's it's kind of hard to get to, wasn't it? Yeah. It's pretty tough. Yeah, so people gotta, wouldn't be just be going down there. No. They'd walk around that spot just because it's thicker down in that creek. Yeah. It's hard to say, really. Well, that's interesting. Well, I mean, you know. That's why my show is understanding. But we want to try to understand. As so much now, as we can as we're, as, we're, as we're talking about that. So now what we're thinking now, right, is that maybe these animals may be creating stashes of ammunition rocks to take down deer and other critters with. That's what I got. Is that what we're thinking? That's what I got. Or possibly uh, to maybe hit a turkey that might be roosting up right. a tree or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that would work. And they probably can pitch twice as good oh. as any professional piss pitcher ever But see, Steve, Steve and I, and, and, and we even discovered this over in North Cape County where we research, those same rocks on top of the ground and the question came up well could a sasquatch throw a rock hard enough and accurate enough to to stun a deer long enough to where it would be easy to snap its neck or whatever i think so and the thing is if that's what they do and they train it just you, you think in terms of like a major league baseball pitcher you throw a ball 90 miles an hour with pinpoint accuracy at, at 20 yards, you know, 60 feet from home plate to the pitcher's mound, 60 feet. Pinpoint accuracy can hit it within a square inch at 20 yards of what he wants to, what he wants to hit at 90 miles an hour. What can an eight to 10 foot tall, 600 pound, Muscled most up. athletic uh, creature on the planet do? 
could he throw it 120 <laughs> miles? You know, yeah. accurate, and, and if you practice it accurately, um, we, you know, when, when you start thinking in those terms, they definitely could do that. Maybe some of the knocking is uh, rock throwing. Could you tell me a little bit about understanding Bigfoot? Okay, um, this got started. Um, I've always been intrigued with the subject. I read a, I'm 56 years old now. I read a book when I was in junior high school called On the Track of Bigfoot. Um, and it mostly dealt with a lot of stuff, Patterson, Gimlin, and then those, uh, those, you know, um, Pacific Northwest, the, the Jerry Cruz prints and things like that. And, and I got, I got to thinking, eh, this stuff's kind of intriguing. I don't think everybody's making this stuff up, but I just thought it was, was Pacific Northwest stuff and nowhere else. And, and you know, long before all your internet and technology and stuff and got into high school, started playing sports, doing things like that. Just forgot all about it. Totally forgot all about it. Um, you know, you, you get married, you're raising your family, your kids are involved in sports. Totally just, just never even thought about Bigfoot again until the show started coming on. Mm -hmm. Finding Bigfoot, the different shows, you know, Legend Meets Science started coming on your travel channel, your animal channel, your history channel, things like that. And start and watching those shows rekindled my interest in the subject matter. And and, and it brought me back. I think, you know what, there's probably something to that. Not that what we find out now, those shows are staged and a lot of the shows are mm -hmm. um, there are things that they do on those shows that, that that we know now doesn't work in the field of research. Yeah, but just not realistic. It piqued my interest up in the subject matter. Mm -hmm. cool. And and I remember, I have a sister, uh, Becky, who is on some of the, the Understanding Bigfoot shows with me. She she lives in North Texas, and she was, she's like, she, she might text me, what are you doing? I was, I'm watching this show about Bigfoot. Oh, she, you don't believe that stuff, do you? I said, well, I, actually, I kind of do. She's all oh, you're nuts, you know. And... And then, fast forward to April 2017, she has a sighting. One of, one of our episodes discusses that in, in full. She has a sighting, and a clear sighting. And, and, and she's like, she sends me a text, hey, I actually think I saw one. And I thought, well, you're, you're pulling my leg, you're joking with me. And, and... Anyway, when she describes what she saw, I said, "Yeah, I said, I, said, I think you definitely actually saw one. You don't now. Maybe you don't think I'm so crazy as you thought I did. Thought, you, thought I was. And within a couple of within like a month of that particular experience that she had. Now, now, now the, the next thing I thought I'm going to help her confirm this sighting." So I'm familiar with the BFRO website. It's got all that database and all this stuff. And I go in there and I fill out a report form and submit it. And I hear nothing from BFRO. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, what she's describing to me is a Class A sighting, and they're not even contacting me. So I, I kind of, a couple of weeks went by, and I kind of got a little, you know, a little perturbed, yeah. a little perturbed with that. So. Doing an internet search, I found the website for Cliff Berrickman. And I thought, I assume Cliff had something to do with BFRO since he's on the Finding Bigfoot show. Mm -hmm. He had a place for contact. He had an email address. So I sent him an email. And I heard back immediately from Cliff. He said, hey, he goes, I don't have anything to do with BFRO site. He says, but what you're, what you're saying sounds intriguing. I'm going to have a friend of mine in your region contact you, if that's okay, and that person was Brian Woods. I don't know if you've met Brian or not. No. Brian's out of Kansas City. He's done some work for BFRO. He's a very knowledgeable researcher. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Brian and I talked. He talked with my sister. And, and her sighting was uh, northern Missouri, about 25 miles west of Hannibal. Okay. So... Um, and Brian was like, yeah. And, and, and Brian said to me, he said, hey, he said, you're down in Cape Girardeau. 
He says, I don't know of anybody doing any research down in Cape Girardeau. He goes, why don't he goes, would you be interested in, in, in doing, since you're interested in this, doing some research? And I laughed him off. I said, they're not down in my area. They might be over Mark Twain National Forest, over the area where we're at now. I said, but that's, you know, that's an hour away. I said, they're not down in my area. I just kind of laughed him off. And so all about the same time frame, but I stayed in contact with Brian. I, we still, I still bounce things off of him to this day. Uh, and then I met Susan Perez. And, and, and we're all friends here with Susan. She's the, she's the, she's the one who administers the SEMO Bigfoot Encrypted Research page. She also lives in Cape, and, she's, and she co-hosts my program with me now on Understanding Bigfoot. She's, she's, a very, she's a very knowledgeable person on the subject matter. She's read 200 books um, and does not have the field experience. Mm -hmm. But I met Susan, and Susan told me what she was doing and what she was about and stuff like that. Oh, you need to talk to my sister. And Susan says, I've got this group. I said, I'm interested in this group. I, came, I, I started going to some meetings. I met Matt at the meetings, um, and and then eventually Steve showed up at the meetings, and Bill, 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 and I met by chance of just through Bigfoot networking. And I said, hey, you need to get over here and work with us because we're close. Mm -hmm. And so with Susan, we started going out in the field and, and, and looking. We we didn't know of the squatches up where we go until probably we run into Steve and met Steve. Mm -hmm. And this is probably the fall of 19 by this time. And then the first time we really had real activity was December of 2019 when my son, who's not affiliated with the group, was up doing some hunting in that area and he came across some tracks and contacted me and I contacted Steve. We went back up and found the tracks. We cast it to them. That was December 2019. Okay, they are here. So then we started going up and checking the place out. Now whether it's the four of us primarily, and sometimes it might just be because of our work schedules, it might just be me and Matt or me and Steve or all four of us or bit, you know, you know, but, but the four of us basically have researched that area pretty thoroughly for two years now. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, an acquaintance at the time, Sean Seaball, who produces the Understanding Bigfoot show, joined the group on the Facebook page because of interest in the subject matter. And Sean was, he, he does the Kayak Flyer podcast fishing, Ozark streams and things like that. And somebody, people, guests on his show would talk about things, strange experiences while they're alone in remote areas fishing that could be Bigfoot related. Yeah. And Sean reached out to, to us and he says, hey, I'd like to get somebody who knows something about Bigfoot on my podcast to talk about this stuff because people are having these experiences and we need to know more about it. So I, I did a pod, October of last year, I did a podcast with him on his Kayak Flyer show. And, and it did, I talked about our research, I talked about what we're learning, what we're doing. Um, so for his, for his viewers, for his people in, in their industry, this is when you're probably having Bigfoot activity. This is when you should maybe feel threatened. This is when you should not feel threatened. This might mean it's time to move on. This might just mean they're letting you know they're over there. Keep fishing. Yeah, you know, based on the experiences that, that we were having. Right. So it's been a long journey for you. And it's not just something that you decided to get into. And then I did that podcast with him. Let it go. It's his show. That was October 2020. Mm -hmm. Last year around Christmas time, it just, he got back with me and he said, hey, he says, you've been my most popular show. He says, and people are asking me, when are you going to get this Bigfoot guy back on the show? I said, oh, you want to do another podcast? 
He said, no. He goes, I, I think you should do your own. Really? He said, I think you should do your own. So he goes, now I'll produce it for you. So we started, we spent the next few months kind of planning, how do we, now, if I'm, so I thought, if I'm going to do a show, how do I want to do it? I don't have the photography skills that you have to do the things that you do on your on your program, which is which is which is very good, very popular. But what would I want? So I thought I want to create a show that will people will come on and share their experiences, share their encounters, share their experiences, share their work. What in? Whether it's somebody who was totally oblivious to Bigfoot like my sister was and had that first sighting. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What went through your mind? Yada, yada, yada. Share your experiences. And so we start finding people to do that. And most of it is based around, around Missouri, around our area. But then we're branching out. And so we started recording some shows and putting some things... You know, Steve and I, I think Steve and I recorded the first show together as a pilot. And then I decided to scrap it. I didn't release it to the public. I said, we want to change the name because I want Bigfoot to be in the name of the show because people do searches for, for hits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And and then, then what do I want to say about Bigfoot? And I, I thought understanding. Let's try to understand. Let's not... We know it's real. We know it's there. Let's try to understand it. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the, where the name "Understanding Bigfoot" that's came from. Keep Bigfoot the name. And we're not hunting Bigfoot. We're not killing Bigfoot. We're not finding Bigfoot. We found it. Mm -hmm. we, we we know where they're at. They're around us right now. Yeah, we already know they're out there. We already we already seen the evidence. Um, so, "Understanding Bigfoot" is the show name I came up with. In in. Steve and I recorded that first pilot and didn't release it to anybody. And, and we it said we got to get back together. And now I've done, I've done 10, 11 shows, and Steve hadn't been on any of them since. Then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the the but we will. But but anyway, so that's that's how we, we started coming out, releasing the show, and then mm -hmm. getting it out some of these Facebook pages and that, so people could kind of see it. And, and the feedback has been positive, and and. Um, for the most part, in that people, people, very people like you and um, David Parker, who who has the Bigfoot, the Real Truth Facebook page, over fifty-five thousand members now. Mm -hmm. uh, pe people, people like uh, Zeus Platt with Western Slope Bigfoot, they have come across, they've seen it, they've sent me notes of encouragement. Hey, you know, we like what you're doing. Keep doing this. And it's enough to kind of, you know, keep you going. That and when you have jobs and you you, um, it, it's difficult. You know, we're trying to get some type of consistent recording pattern to where I'm at least putting a show or two up a month, mm -hmm. and and trying to get the right. I mean, some of our shows we recorded just because we wanted to get something out there, and it really, you, you know, not a lot of substance sometimes it's get the guests to come on talk um get them to have the right technology to record out of their homes you know like your your like your zoom type mm -hmm. recordings to, to have that technology to get them on um, the software some people just have cell phones it doesn't really support that to really get so we're working on some things and and we got a lot of good things in the works to really i think get the show very popular in the coming couple of next couple of months. I mean, I've I've really just done this, and we haven't been consistent with it. Mm -hmm. um, I've got currently at this recording 174 subscribers. I think my most of my shows are between 200 and 500 something hits. The most popular I think was at 520 something uh, this week, and. And I've had people contact me and say, your show should be more popular, should be getting more hits, here are some things you can do. Um, I think I had one person one time said, man, you guys don't know what you're talking about. But <laughs> you, just, you, you just laugh it off, right? You just laugh, yeah, yeah. Maybe we don't know what we're talking about. We're having fun doing it. But yeah. yeah, I get that all the time. But, but, 
the uh, it's just kind of funny, but but the whole thing is that's how it came about, and and that's what we do. So we we are, but we're in the process. We I I recorded last week with a gentleman in Tacoma, Washington, Lynn Gasper, and and just has the the neatest interactions, personal interactions. Mm-hmm. We were talking physical, hand holding type contact with Sasquatches, and. And I'm and and he's well known even in the Pacific Northwest. So I'm looking forward to getting that out there. And then we've got a lot of others that we're going to hopefully do something with us and you mm-hmm. uh, in a two part with with this thing. So yeah, I'm so excited. I'm I'm really looking forward to what 2022 brings with that program. Yeah, and and see where it goes. But okay, good it, deal. It's and that's be- understanding Bigfoot. Understanding Bigfoot has it's become a it's become a uh, it's become more than a hobby now in that. Um, I want to get to the woods to have interactions. Mm-hmm. I don't care if I get the picture. I don't care if I catch the perfect video or the perfect audio. I just want for myself to have the interactions with the species. And I think it's so neat mm-hmm. that they are there, the massive size the intelligence, and just to have those interactions, and and and, um, and I tell people that they find out there are sasquatches in the woods. Oh, I'm not going to go back in there again. I, I used, I've I've hiked in those woods for ten years. I'm not going to go back and do that again. You don't have to quit doing that. If you've hiked in there for ten years. It's okay for you to hike in there. They're not going to bother you. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they haven't bothered you yet. Uh, they'll watch you, though. They'll watch you. And they might protect you if you got in danger. You know, we don't know that, but we've heard stories of that, right? Mm-hmm. And, and um, you know, as long as you're not meaning harm to them, they're not going to hurt you. That's one thing that we're, that all four of us are understanding. And when, when and Bill was Bill was the feature on one of my shows, one of my, my popular shows. We talked about his first experience, that first experience, uh, and and the title of that episode is "Taunt It and Greet It" in Southeast Missouri because his first experience they taunted him pretty good and scared him to death. Yeah, big they time. Did. They did. But lately, his experiences, they have been more coming close to the camp and greeting him, like saying, hi, Bill, yeah. in their own way. Mm-hmm. You know, whistling interchange the other night, things like that, yeah. and in a very non-threatening way. So it's like, you know, and that's kind of what led me, because I'm, I'm at first of my own. There's no way I'm going out there and spending the night mm-hmm. to, you know what? They, they, they're coming around old Bill. They haven't, they haven't hurt him yet. They could have, you know. They could have hurt him if they wanted to. Mm-hmm. That was their intention. I mean, they're right there next to the tent, and he's vulnerable. If they wanted to do damage to Bill, they could have done all kinds of damage to Bill. Mm-hmm. But they didn't. And and um, the um, and he even fired off rounds the first night. I had to fire my forty-five off just five to, times. Just to just to just to just in yeah. the air to scare them of what you know. Get away from me! I can't take this anymore. Mm-hmm. And and um, to to now, you know. We keep the guns put up because we don't feel yeah. like we need them. Don't need them. Don't need them. And and, and um, so that's what anyway. That's me with the show, and that's what I want to do with the show. And and I want people to be able to see it and realize that these are real. They're very prevalent in this country and in the state of Missouri more than people think they are thousands upon thousands because just in 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 cape county i'm i'm sure my guess is there'd be at least a hundred of them and people don't even know you know that's not even recorded in a database Mm -hmm. and so that's that that's that's what we do with understanding bigfoot (laughs) mike do you think they're going to come in tonight well, you know what? We've given them enough noise to know they got something. There's something going on up here. Mm-hmm.
Yeah, we, done, we did we did some calls. There's apples. Than, a little more noise than normal mm -hmm. at the rummage household. If they don't, though, it's probably because I'm here. You know, they're not used to different people. You know, maybe they like interacting well, with you when it's just, just you. Steve was here for the first time last weekend, mm -hmm. and obviously they had him right behind the you know right behind the cabin. Yeah. And didn't realize it overnight. Yeah. So. But Lulu, the, ne the next morning, was pretty adamant about going behind there and smelling, and she wouldn't let it go. And I finally, me and Bill were working on something, a tree, and I said, Bill, we're going to have to check that out. Mm -hmm. Lulu's giving me that look. We did, and that's when we if found If we sit around, you know, build a fire and sit around that fire for a while, I, I, I talk, I, my guess is they'll probably venture close. Yeah. Do a couple hauls about every half an hour, see if you can bring them in a little closer. Well... But if they're already close, they could be right there at the wood line right now. You never see them. If they're already close, though, they, they'll know it's us howling. Mm -hmm. That's my take on that, anyway. Yeah, maybe they'll give us localization. I'll put her in the cabin. It's gonna be cold in there. Thank <laughs> you.